Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great day. Um, it's been a tough evening and morning for me. We lost a, a dear friend, Dr. Alan Barron, an amazing man who passed away suddenly. And his infectious love of Judaism and his joy for life and zest will stay with us. And I already miss him, and I wanted to dedicate this morning's Torah to him, Aaron Moshe Ben Svi, that his soul should be elevated to the highest levels and rest in peace, and to his beloved wife and dear friend Roz Barrett and his family, Shem should comfort them all. So, the Gemara tells us a very fascinating, interesting thing. The Gemara says that this guy from the Galil, came over to Rav Chizda, one of the greatest sages, and he says, blessed, this is what he said to him, he says, blessed is the Almighty, who has given a Torah of three, He's given a Torah of three, to a nation of three, through a person who is third, on the third day, in the third month. What does this mean? So the rabbi say, very simple, Blessed is he who has given a Torah of three. Why is the Torah considered three? Because you have the Bible, you have the prophets, and you have the scriptures. That's three. To a nation of three. Why are we called a nation of three? Because you have the Kohen, the Levi, and the Israelite Jews. So there's three types of Jews. To a person who is third, what does that mean? To a person who is third, it's Moses. Moses was the third in his family. There was Miriam, Aaron, and then Moshe. What does it mean on the third day? Because if you read about the Jews coming to Sinai, they traveled and then they came and rested and waited, prepared three days, and on the third day they got the Torah. And what does it mean to the third month? Because today is Rosh Chodesh Sivan, and the Torah was given in the month of Sivan, and Sivan is the third month. You have Nisan, Iyar, Sivan. So did I confuse you a little? Let me just say it quickly again. A Torah of three is the Tanakh, Torah and Abim Ksuvim, a nation of three, the Jewish people call Levi Yisrael. Through Moshe is the third in his family, on the third day of them waiting, and in the third month. Okay, yippee ki yay So the guy from Khalil says, blessed is God who has given the Torah on the third. What, what's, so, what's so amazing of this number of three that the Torah speaks to us about that is so fascinating? So you know, when you have an argument, two people are arguing and they're fighting over something or they have a disagreement of something, you come to a compromise. You shift this one a little bit to the right, this one a little bit to the left, and together you have a compromise. But there's something much deeper than that. Take, for example, I'll give you an example. You're going in the forest and you see this huge tree with two big branches that are off, go, shooting off the tree, offshoots. And imagine that these are the two different people, two different arguments, right? When you see the tree, and if you come close to it, and all you see are the branches, and if it's a big tree, the branches could be so big and so separate that when you see from close the branches, you don't see the tree. And you might think that they're two totally random branches that are totally separate and totally divergent. But if you back up a little bit, and you look at its source, you realize one second, these two branches are really part of one source, of one tree. And really, they're totally connected. Although they look so separate, they have one tree that they spring off of and are connected through. You see, the Torah is the greatest unifier. How does the Torah unify us? Because the Torah teaches us about our oneness. The Torah tells us that when you see these two branches that are so divergent, really they come from one tree. Oneness is a unifier. You can take all the atoms and molecules that separate people by thousands of miles and years. But ultimately, there's one unifier. When we say the Shema every morning, we say Shema Yisrael, listen, O God, Hashem Elekeinu, God is one, Hashem Echad, one is, God is one. Why one? Because one is the greatest unifier that connects all people. But Judaism doesn't just unify us because Torah is unifying. What Judaism does and what the Torah does is it 
finds our expression and shows us how everything in the world, all divergent people and things and creations are all unified by one tree. They're all branches coming off of the same tree. Judaism is not just a religion. It's a methodology. It teaches us an idea of unity of the whole creation. That's what monotheism is. And that's what Judaism gives us. And now you can understand the celebration and the greatness of this little guy who said, hey, look how great God is. He gave us a Torah of three, to our people of three. You see, one is unity without an expression of divergence. It's only I. It represents singularity without expression of personalities, without there allowing to be differences. Two is division. Three is when those two come together and together they make a true unifying by seeing that the two branches come off, come off of the same tree. So one is I and nobody else. Two is division. And three is when those two divisions find that those two branches come from the same tree. Imagine, for example, a couple is arguing about their kid's education. So if the only interest you have is for your child and what's best for the child, then ultimately, when you come together and you strip away all the layers and you're honest with each other, you can come to true unity about what's best for the child. But if it's all about our ego and who's gonna win the war and it's about us, then there's no way you can maybe compromise. But you can bring out the unity within the argument. Compromise is for when there's egos involved. When there's so much ego, there's no room for unity. It's I and there's no room for finding the truth. But when there's true honesty and we're all focused on what's best, then we find the unity in the diversity. That we all might be different, but ultimately we all want the same thing. And that's what monotheism and that's what Torah is. And that's what's so needed in our marriages today, in our lives today. You know the joke they say about this guy who says that the man always has the first word in every argument? Because every time he says something, it starts a new argument. Sometimes we're, we're so focused on our own ego, on our own selves, that we forget to recognize what unites us. And there's no way to bring us together. And that's what the Galil man celebrated. He says, listen, great is the Torah. Miraculous is the Torah, which is a Torah of three. It doesn't see one, that there's no diversity. It doesn't see us as there's no uniqueness in us. No, it sees the uniqueness, but it also doesn't see us as two. It sees us as three, as a Echad that's coming together and taking that tree and not just focusing on the two branches, but seeing we're the source of those two branches are, that they're still connected to the whole time. I once read this fascinating story. You know, tomorrow's Memorial Day and we'll talk about it more. But I read this story about these two girls, two Israeli girls, who were going on a hot day in the middle of the summer and they were going to visit the grave of their brother Daniel who was killed in the Second Lebanon War. And it was a hot day. You know how hot it gets in August in Israel. Rosh Chodesh Av was a day of his yard site. And as they're climbing the mountain to get to his to get to his grave, they see this elderly Sephardic man who's going and climbing up. And as they're walking next to him, he falls down from the heat and he's schwitzing. And they immediately try to help him up. And they see a soldier not far and they ask him to come help this guy up. And they get him some water and they continue to their brother Daniel's grave to pray on the day of his yard site. And as they come to the grave of their brother Daniel, they realize that this old man is staring at them and he's at the same place. And they thought maybe he came to some grave next by, nearby. But suddenly they see he comes over to them and says, what are you doing here? Why are you praying at this grave? So they say, you know, this is the grave of our dear brother Daniel who was killed in the Second Lebanon War. And the guy looks at them and says, that's impossible, because I know when Daniel died, he was a lone soldier. He had no family. So how could you be his siblings? And they said, you know, yes. 
when Daniel died, he was a lone soldier, and we still lived in America, but since then we made an aliyah, and we come every day, every year, to say, to say our prayers at his grave. And the guy says, I don't understand. You see this grave right here? A few graves down, that's my son. He was their commander. He was Daniel's commander. And when Daniel died, he said he doesn't have any family here. And every year he went and he said Kaddish on the day of the earth and he brought a minion together at Daniel's grave. So someone should say Kaddish for Daniel, for Daniel on the day of his yard site. And when my son got killed a few years later, I took it upon myself to continue this tradition. So Daniel shouldn't be alone and someone should say Kaddish for him every year on his yard site. And I did it religiously. I never missed a year. And I did it full of love and full of joy. And then he turns to the young woman and he says, I'm getting old. It's hard for me. I don't know how much longer I'll live. Promise me that you'll arrange a minion every day at Daniel's. Every year on Daniel's yard and at his grave so someone could say Kaddish. And the sisters, of course, promise it's their brother. And as he goes there, he looks up at to the heavens and he says master of the universe dear God you know that I did this loyally since my son passed away I made sure every year Kaddish was said for this beautiful soldier who gave his life for the people of Israel but now I'm old and I don't know how much longer I'll be able to do it but these girls his sisters promised me they will do it I give up my time my responsibility to them and a few months later this old Sephardic man passed away. Talk about unity. Talk about living on two sides of the world, yet being so connected. Talk about taking these two branches and realizing that their source is the same tree. Shema Yisrael Hashem Malukeinu Hashem Echad. God is one. God is singular. Everything in this world is an expression of God's oneness. And we're all, we might be different, but we're all part of that oneness. And that's what this Galil man celebrated on Shavuot, which is coming up this Friday. He said, look at this power of God that it doesn't see us as one. It doesn't see us as two. It sees us as three. It sees us as two different branches. It part of the one tree. Have a great day. We'll see you all tomorrow. May Hashem give us the achdut, the love, the unity that celebrates Shavuot and celebrate the greatest gift of the Torah. See you tomorrow.